No one will be surprised that the big issue of the year in this country will be the referendum on a proposed constitutionally enshrined Indigenous voice to Parliament. If you're not sure what it's all about, well, join the club, because no details have been provided on how this will work. All we are told is that it will offer, quote, a permanent means to advise the Australian Parliament and Government on the views of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples on matters that affect them. Okay, so two questions come to mind. One, does Australia actually need such a thing? And two, are there any aspects particularly relevant to the Australian Jewish community? On the first issue, with so little justification, it is hard to understand why the country is in such dire need of a new formula. How will it work? Who will be involved? What power will the Voice Committee have? What issues might be potentially included and what won't? And why are current Aboriginal voices, both inside and outside Parliament, all of a sudden not suitable to provide this input? We don't know any of this because the government hasn't told us. And if that's the case, how can they expect us to blindly accept it? On a philosophical level, I'm reminded of the American civil rights activist Martin Luther King, who in a speech in 1963 famously said this line, I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the colour of their skin, but by the content of their character. Powerful words indeed. My view is that by taking the exact opposite view, the voice is an inherently racist endeavour. That is, the referendum is effectively asking Australians to judge and divide people by the colour of their skin rather than the content of their character. And the fact that prominent Indigenous leaders such as Warren Mundine, Anthony Dillon and Jacinta Price are opposed to it also raises questions on how necessary it really is. What's wrong with our current panels of experts providing whatever input is necessary to the government? What's the benefit of having it forever locked into the Constitution? It also seems to me that the voice will function as some sort of third house of parliament that will sign off on all sorts of legislation. We have enough debate and division in politics with two houses, so why would we want another one? But of particular relevance to us is whether the Australian Jewish Association should take an official view on this. Most of our communal organisations have come out in support of the referendum, imploring us to vote yes, and all without any consultation with the community. But why? What's the connection to Jewish Australia? And why are they pushing the community to vote in favour of it? Jewish Australians have a range of opinions on everything political. So why do we need this groupthink approach? Surely people can make up their own minds on whether to vote yes or no. I can guarantee that the Jewish left will repeatedly roll out the trendy idea of tikkun olam, which is their way of pushing socialist concepts under the guise of pseudo-Jewish values. But they've got it all wrong, as the true concept of tikkun olam is to make the world a better place by establishing godly qualities throughout the world. Hijacking this religious concept for their own political purposes is just typical of the left. The Australian Jewish Association has released a policy statement that discusses this subject in general terms, and right on cue, some of our woke leaders have taken aim at the AJA. However, we are not strongly advocating one way or another. If the concept of a constitutionally enshrined Indigenous voice speaks to you, then vote yes. Although Jewish experiences have shown that dividing human rights matters by race is never a good idea. But if you have reservations about the agenda behind this campaign, as I do, then vote no and say to the government, OK, there may be areas that need further attention, but come up with a better plan to advance the causes of Indigenous people. Yet again, the AJA sees our community being pushed by our supposedly representative organisations 
towards all the woke issues of the day. And also, again, we will happily speak up for those Jewish Australians seeking a more conservative and balanced view of our community. This is Alan Friedman for the Australian Jewish Association.